What's up everybody? Grigor here again bringing you another review. The t this time I'm going to review Captain Marvel for you all. Um, I watched it. I watched it twice and I gotta say it was better than I expected. I went in there with not very low expectations but alright the story um, we'll get to in a second. Um, the expectations for me and I'm sure a lot of people going into this movie was how strong of a feminist film this was gonna be you know if anyone who's been following Brie Larson lately um, knows she's been getting a lot of backlash by fans and she's had a lot of people boycott this film specifically for her comments that she made a couple months ago or a year ago and for those for those of you who are hearing these things but don't know exactly what happened I'll fill you in real quick there's this movie uh, Wrinkle in Time and she was accepting an award for something and she made a mention on how bad the reviews were for Wrinkle in Time blaming, um, in her words, middle-aged white dudes um, reviewing these films and uh, saying how it's not meant for them to review or watch. And here's a person who's also advocating uh, diversity and stuff. So it's kind of contradicting what she was saying at the moment. It rubbed people the wrong way. But um, not me. I'm a huge Brie Larson fan, but still I went in this film thinking it was going to be women rule, boys drool type of film. And it had its moments. I will say that. Some lines here and there had its moments. It's, uh, it's a diverse film. There's uh, Asian actresses in here. There's African Americans working here. There's a female, it's a female-led uh, film. So a very diverse film and... It didn't feel a uh, force to me as I thought it was gonna be. Now, uh, that being said, when you go into the story, here's a story where I said to people before I watched this film, they were handcuffed from the minute they decided to uh, promote this film. They promoted this film as Captain Marvel is the mightiest, most powerful uh, character in the Marvel Universe. Now, to those who may not see that as a big issue, the problem is when you go into the movie, you have low um, worry, um, little bit of worry on this character is going to struggle throughout the film. She's not going to have many problems. It's like watching a Superman movie. You go into the movie knowing Superman's going to come out on top. You know that in the end. It's friggin' Superman. He's a god. Same goes with Brie Larson's character, Captain Marvel. Not giving much away, but like they said, they were right on how powerful she is. Now she's going into the movie, um, into the story, and you have zero sense of uh, worry that she's not going to succeed in the end. You know she's going to be in Avengers Endgame, but the movie was necessary to bridge the uh, gap between the two Avengers films and there was an Ant-Man in between so these films were necessary to bridge the gap and introduce us to Captain Marvel was it a good origin story no it wasn't a good origin story I felt like they didn't really show how uh, she was as Carol Danvers that's her character's name you don't really see her how she was before her accident and um, how she becomes Captain Marvel. They really start off the story with her in outer space. She's already, she already has the powers and throughout the film she gets glimpses of her past. I really wished um, they really brushed up and spent more time on how she became a pilot, how she um, chose this mission that she failed. Um, that caused her to have this accident and eventually her getting all these superpowers. Um, that being said, it is led by a fantastic cast. Um, uh, Jude Law's in this, Annette Benning, Benning and uh, Samuel L. Jackson, which is, he's in every single movie under man, uh, God's Green Earth. But uh, overall, it was an okay movie. I recommend watching it just for the sake of bridging the gap between the two Avengers and um, Ant-Man. Now, Ant-Man isn't really focused on in this film uh, at all, but it is, this film does bridge the gap between the two Avengers. So I say yes, go watch the movie. If you're a fan of Brie like I am, brush all that, um, the hatred you have towards, you may have towards her aside, and just go watch the movie for its um, good humor, the 90s nostalgia. 
It is set in the 1990s, and if you grew up in the 90s, you will love this movie. I grew up in the 90s, and the music, the, the references to the internet, to the cars, to the outfits, it's amazing. It's really funny. They did a good job on mixing the nostalgia of the 90, 1990s. So, go watch that. It did fantastic in the box office, uh, better than they expected. I think it reached, uh, in America, North America, over 150 million, which is like 50 million more than what Wonder Woman did, and despite the backlash. I think they would have probably reached 180, 190 million uh, with that, but that being aside, it, it was very successful, and it's continuing to be successful in the box office, especially worldwide as well. So, this is good news going into Avengers Endgame. It's going to go into Avengers Endgame, and it should be the biggest movie of all time, box office-wise. So, I have high hopes now for Avengers. That's what I was worried about going into this one. Because if this one didn't do so good, I would have been eh for Endgame. Uh, box office uh, would have uh, flaked, and the movie itself wouldn't have had my uh, full excitement for it. So. Go watch it. I think you'll like it. Um, go ahead and subscribe to my channel too. I'm going to watch uh, Ben Affleck's new movie that just hit Netflix. Really excited about that. Triple Frontier starring uh, Ben Affleck, Oscar Isaac, and Charlie Hunnam. Uh, so that should be a good one. I'll let you guys know what I think of that. Um, let me know what you guys think of Captain Marvel. If you saw it, what you guys think of it? If you guys liked it? Um, and let me know if you're going to see Endgame as well. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Take care everybody.